the parent and coach's mindset guide. Now, the reason why these are combined together, I break these down into two different exercises when we do this. Um, I combine them together because it is the same exact format. It's just you do it once with a parent, whichever parent is more involved in your sport, and you do it with your coach. And you might, and you might do this exercise with multiple coaches because a lot of athletes have a personal coach, they have a team coach, and sometimes there's assistant coaches that they're very involved in. The point is, pick the parent who's more involved in your sport and pick whatever coaches are most in your mind. The ones that, that get in your head the most, do this exercise with them. Now, when you, look at, when you look at your success in sports, it has a lot to do with your environment. Okay, what we want to have is a well-oiled machine where everyone's speaking the same language. We have a good culture around us. We have a good environment around us. Now, that's not always the case, but we want to do the best that we possibly can. So this is our attempt to control the situation in the best, in the best way that we can with our athletes and with our teams. So the first thing we have with both our parents and our coaches, we do an assessment of how much, how much they get into our mind. So I did, my, I did my master's degree thesis on perfectionism and anxiety in athletes. And we found, not too surprising, that athletes who were more perfectionistic, they got more nervous in competitions and they did worse. Okay, so there was a, there was a, a pretty significant relationship between perfectionism and anxiety. So, if we keep the perfectionism low, anxiety will be low, we'll be able to perform better. Okay, so what does this have to do with parents? Now, perfectionism, on, this, on the, um, the scale that I used for my thesis, it was broken down into six different um, characteristics. And two of them had to do with the parents, parental criticism and parental expectations. Now, when the athlete perceived that the critiques were, that, that they were getting critiqued too frequently, and when the athlete perceived that expectations were too high, that was related with higher perfectionism, higher anxiety. So it's not, it doesn't have so much to do with reality, it has to do more with an interpretation of reality. So a kid may perceive that a parent has high expectations, or a kid may perceive that the parent's critical. Whether or not that's true, um, that's another story, but just having that perception that the critique is high and the expectations are high, uh, that could lead to a negative outcome. So what we did is we put together a series of six questions that were taken from that, that official uh, scientific perfectionism inventory, we changed the words around them, we made it into yes or no's. You can see what we're getting at here. So, answering these questions, yes or no, and we do this once with the parent and once with the coach. So I'm only gonna go through it one time. Same questions. Number one, it's difficult to meet their expectations of me. Yes or no. They always expect me to win or do well. Yes or no. They expect me to be the best in just about everything. Yes or no. Their standards for me are higher than my own, yes or no. They get mad and disappointed when I'm less than perfect. And finally, they have a problem with me when I make mistakes. Now obviously, I, I changed the wording around here, so basically to answer no was a good thing, and answering yes was a bad thing, um, and obviously the athlete can kind of get where you're going with that, but we really found a lot of times, where there are a lot of athletes answering yes to a lot of these questions, and then we say, okay, that's a red flag. We definitely want to keep this in our mind because um, the parent might be causing stress. So it doesn't guarantee that the parent's hurting the kid in that situation, inadvertently hurting the kid. I assume that no parent or coach is um, you know, behind the scenes twisting their mustache trying to unhatch a plan to ruin this kid's life. I assume everyone has the best intentions, but the parent may be inadvertently hurting the kid uh, by putting too much pressure on them with these perfectionistic standards. So, too many yeses is a red flag. That's part one of this exercise. Then we go over to part two. We ask five questions that every parent should ask their kid and that every coach should ask their athlete. And we do this the opposite way. We have the, we have the kid fill this out, but it could work either way. So the first question is, what, what does my parent or coach do that helps me mentally? So no one's all good or all bad, right? So there's certain things that your parents are doing that are helping you mentally in sports. What is it? Be aware of that. Secondly, what, are, what is my coach or parent doing that's inadvertently hurting me mentally? So think about it. Are they talking too much about rankings and records? Do they compare you too much to an older sibling or a younger sibling? Um, what's, what's going on? And, and, it's, and it's very different for each person. So you want to know the positives and the negatives because the idea is we're going to have a discussion with this with the parent or coach after this is done. Okay, so what's my parent doing helping, that's helping me mentally? What's my parent or coach doing that's hurting me mentally? Um, number three, how would I prefer my parents to critique me? Now, we made this in a multiple choice format. First of all, parents and coaches, 
they have to critique the kids. A coach definitely has to critique their kid in sports. That's their job. A parent doesn't always have to critique their kid in sport, right? Because this is this is a non-essential, what I would call. Now, as far as parenting, they have to be a parent. They do have to critique their kid. When it comes to sports, it's not essential that the parent critique the kid. They could let go of the reins a little bit. The coach doesn't have that same, I don't know if you'd even want to call it luxury, doesn't have that same position. They have to critique the kid. That's their job. So. It's very important to understand as an athlete, what's your level of sensitivity? And if you're a coach or a parent, it's very important for you to understand the sensitivity level of your athlete. So I made it into a multiple choice, so it's a little bit easier um, to understand and to see where you might fall into this. So how do I prefer my parent or coach to critique me? A, directly say it like it is. You don't need to sugarcoat it, so just tell me straight. B, a little bit more positively. I'm a little bit sensitive to criticism. C, very positively, I'm very sensitive to criticism, or D, lay off completely, less is better. Now obviously, if you're a coach, you can't lay off completely, you have to critique the kid. But if you're a parent, D might very well be an option, and you should listen to a kid if they, if they give you that feedback. So it's important to know our sensitivity. It's important if we're an athlete, a coach, or a parent to know our own personal sensitivities because we will suffer in relationships, we will suffer in life, if we can't communicate to other people what we need. Okay, so it's the golden rule, treat other people the way you want to be treated. The essence of that rule is really treat other people the way they want to be treated. In other words, I use this example. I love pizza, but I don't go fishing with pizza because fish don't like pizza. Fish like bait. So I'll put bait on the end of the line and that's how I reel in the fish, not with pizza. I feed them what they want. It's very important, especially with the critique where people feel very attacked and especially our society now is very sensitive and we've trained kids to be very sensitive. That's a whole other story. But especially in a very sensitive society, it has to be a receiver dependent message. In other words, it's the way that the person hears the message that we're giving them. So make sure we're wording it in a way, word the critique in a way that's digestible for the person to hear it. Okay, so, you know, each, each athlete's different. And if you're doing this, this exercise as an athlete, you really want to be super honest with yourself. So three brothers in my family, I'm one of them, all three different levels of sensitivity, right? One of my brothers, you could say to him, you know, you got to work on this or you're going to lose. He shrugs his shoulders and he says, okay, he's a straight, he likes it straight. Just tell him like it is. Uh, for me, I'm a little bit more sensitive than that. You know, I might, I might listen to you, but then I might kind of hold a grudge. The other brother is real sensitive and you know what? He may never listen to you again if you tell him that. So, and here's the thing, that the sensitive brother, he wound up being the best athlete out of all of us. So if you're a coach or if you're a parent, you just lost your best athlete because you weren't able to critique them the way that would be most beneficial to them. So we're not saying don't critique. Don't get me wrong here. Don't get it twisted. It's important to critique, but the way we do it. And if we're an athlete, we have to be able to communicate how we would like to be critiqued. That's an important thing to communicate with your coach, with your parent, and eventually friendships and relationships. Okay, so what's your sensitivity level to crit criticism? Question number four, how would I prefer my parents or coaches to treat me before a match or before a competition? So any, whatever competition, how do you want the coach to treat you before? We made this in uh, uh, you know, multiple choice format also. Do you want the coach to get you mad and fired up, yell at you? A, B, keep me calm and relaxed. C, joke around and talk about anything other than the sport. D, completely lay off um, of um, lay off me completely. That was actually E. <laughs> D was give me sport-related technical feedback. So you see, you don't have to necessarily pick one. It could be a combination of multiple of, of these answers that I gave you. But the idea is to get your mind thinking, what exactly do you need right before you go out there and compete? And if you're a parent or coach, what exactly does your athlete need? Most people don't like to be yelled at or get fired up. The only reason why I added that is really because to show coaches and parents that when they go through this with their athletes, that they don't like that. Generally speaking, the kid wants you to either lay off or the kid wants you, the athlete might want you to talk about anything other than the sport and just joke around and laugh, right? Um, I remember one of the athletes I worked with, his goal was to go to the state tournament in high school. He was a great high school athlete. He wanted to go to the state tournament as an individual. and. He said to me that well before before practices in practices he, he he wrestled really well in competition he didn't so much and he said before competitions his dad would give him a pre-match talk and I said whoa, whoa, whoa back up pre-match talk your dad gives you pre-match talk does he do that in practice and the kid said no and I said well why are we changing it up before a competition 
stop doing the dad stopped doing the pre-match talk with the kid and he wound up reaching his goal of going to the state tournament a simple correction like that could go such a long way so you need to know what you need as an athlete and as a coach or a parent you need to know what to give your athlete and then question number five how would i prefer my parents to deal with me or coach after a competition so when do you want feedback do you want it right away do you want it later on in the day or if it's a parent do you not want any technical feedback at all coach has to give you technical feedback the coach could give you the courtesy though of maybe not giving you technical feedback right away or the next day okay so we're not trying to teach the, we're not trying to tell the parents um, they can't parent we're not trying to tell the coaches they can't coach it's a matter of communicate communicating opening up the dialogue for an ongoing conversation that's going to be in the best interest of the athlete. So it's kind of like an athlete-centered model here where the coach and the parent are able to give the athlete exactly what they need. So that's lesson number two. You would go through that and the idea is for an athlete to go through this lesson with their coach and with their parent. The first one where we did the yes and no's, they don't have to go through that one with the parent, but this is the worksheet that we want them to go through with the parent or coach. So everyone's on the same page. You want your coach and you want your parent to see your answers for this. Okay, and again, those questions were I'll review one more time. What do they do that helps me mentally? What do they do that inadvertently hurts me mentally? How do I need to be critiqued by them? How do I want them to treat me before competition? And, and um, how would I prefer them to deal with me after the competition? When do I want the corrective feedback? Now, after that's done, you do worksheet three on this series. And this one you don't do with the coach or the parent. So, if nothing changes, assuming nothing will. It's very hard to make changes. We're working real hard to, ch to change and improve ourselves. Maybe your parent or your coach is just not open to critique. Maybe they're stubborn. I don't know the situation. Or maybe they just get stressed out. When, when, at, when anyone deals with a stressful situation or pressure, we tend to revert backwards to our most practiced behavior. So if a parent or a coach is not working on their mindset actively like you are, what's going to tend to happen is they're going to shift back to dealing with things the old way they dealt with them. Well, you still have to deal with your parent or coach effectively if you're an athlete. So assuming nothing changes, after you go through this lesson, after you go through that second worksheet with your coach or with your parent, how are you gonna deal with your coach or your parent assuming they stay the same? So having a plan. And honestly, you could flip this right around. If you're a parent or if you're a coach, you could have a plan. If your kid doesn't listen to you, how am I going to deal with this? So knowing what you're going to do before it actually happens, right? If I'm a coach, which I was a coach, I worked with a, I was an assistant coach at a college wrestling team, and I had to know that certain kids were less coachable, they were less likely to listen to me. So assuming they don't listen to me, well now how do I deal with this kid to still get the best result? Having a plan ahead of time is going to go a long way. So the idea of this is to get the, the coaches and the parents on the same page with the athlete, create a well-oiled machine, a solid environment around the kid. Again, worksheet number two with those five important questions. We want to go through with the athlete, the parent, and the coach. You go through them separately, the athlete, coach, and then athlete, parent. You do that. And then after that, you deal with, well, if nothing changes, what exactly are you going to be telling yourself, having a plan to make sure you're able to deal with it? Right, so if I know my dad is always going to talk about records, ranking, seedings, and predictions, and I already spoke to him in lesson two about not doing that to me, I have to have a plan. So maybe my plan is when he brings it up, you know, I just kind of yes him. Or I just, in my head, I laugh it off like, ah, he just doesn't get it. Right, I remember there was a, a story about a sports psychologist. One of the things he used to do, he used to collect old keyboards that were used, and he used to rip out the delete button, and he used to keep the delete button in his pocket. And when he would talk to someone who would give him negative advice or just be like, you know, just criticize or a gossiper, he would hold the, the delete button, he would press it in his butt, in his pocket. Delete, delete, delete. And in his mind, he was deleting what they were saying to him. Again, it may be a little bit of a mind trick, but it made him laugh. He didn't take the situation so serious, and he was able to deal with things more effectively. So have a plan, use humor. Um, don't be disrespectful to anyone, but make sure you have a plan. If things aren't gonna go your way, it's still on you to make the best of that situation. So that's what work three, three is about. Make the best of the situation, even if your parent or coach don't listen to this uh, exercise like you are. But go through this. Now the lesson is take this and go through this with your parent and with your coach and anyone who's really involved in your wrestling, possibly even an older sibling. Get after it.